This is the third part of our discussion on Cauchy Riemann equations. So far, we have seen or derived what are Cauchy Riemann equations and how it is used for checking the differentiability. In fact, uh, Cauchy Riemann equations are not logically equivalent to the differentiability of a function at that point. In fact, it is the necessary condition. So, if function is differentiable, then the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied. Now, in this part, we will find a necessary and sufficient criteria for the differentiability of a function using these Cauchy Riemann equations. So, we will add some more condition, some more conditions into Cauchy Riemann equations and then it will become equivalent, logically equivalent for checking the differentiability of a function. So, so now we are going to derive a criteria for the differentiability of a function. So, why this criteria is important? Because so far we have seen uh, what is a derivative of a function or how we calculate the derivative of a function at a point. And in simple examples, it is very simple to apply this definition. But in more complicated cases, it becomes very, very tedious task to checking to check the differentiability of a function at that point. So this criteria is going to be very, very useful for our further discussions. Let's recall what are Cauchy Riemann equations. So given a function with components u of x y plus iota v of x y, the Cauchy Riemann equations at that point z naught, which is equal to x naught plus iota y naught, are given as so the partial derivative of u with respect to x at point x naught y naught must be equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to y at point x naught y naught. And the second equation is uh, the partial derivative of u with respect to y at point x naught y naught must be equal to the partial derivative of v with respect to x at point x naught y naught. So these are the Cauchy Riemann equations and uh, if function is differentiable then these equations are satisfied. Now the question is, can we find a necessary and sufficient criteria for checking the differentiability of a function? Now the answer to this question is, yes, we can find it and here is the criteria. So we have the following theorem. We have a function f with components u of xy plus out of v of xy. Now we want to check the differentiability around or at this point z0 is equal to x0 plus out of y0. So, uh, the first condition is uh, the function must be defined in some neighborhood of this point. Now, once again, we are calculating the limit of some function. Okay, so when z approaches to z0, and this is not possible if the function is not defined in some neighborhood of that point. So, this must be satisfied that the function is defined in some neighborhood of this point z0. Now, the second condition is the partial derivatives should exist in that neighborhood of point z0. And the third condition is uh, these partial derivatives must be continuous. Now remember, uh, when uh, we discussed Cauchy Riemann equations, then we didn't impose the condition of continuity on the partial derivatives. So there was only the condition that the partial derivative exists. Now over here, we are imposing an extra condition on the Cauchy Riemann equations that the partial derivatives must be also continuous. And of course, the Cauchy Riemann equations are satisfied that is, ux is equal to vy and uy is equal to minus vx. So, if these conditions are satisfied, then we have the following result that the function is differentiable at point z0 and the derivative can be calculated using either of the following expressions. So, we can either use uh, the derivative is equal to ux plus iota vx of course at point x0 y0 or we can use the expression uh, f prime z0 is equal to vy x0 y0 minus iota uy x0 y0. So we can use either of these expressions to find the derivative of that function and of course if the above conditions are satisfied then only the function is differentiable and then we use these equations to find the derivative of that function at point z0. Now uh, let's consider uh, this example where we have f of z is equal to e raised to power minus y cosine x plus iota e raised to power minus y sine x. So, uh, the two components of this function are, so if f of z is equal to f of x plus iota y which is equal to u of x y plus iota 
v of x y so comparing uh, this uh, f of z with this expression so this implies u of x y is basically equal to e raised to power minus y cosine x and v of x y is basically equal to e raised to power minus y sine x now uh, over here we want to check whether this function is defined in some neighborhood of point x naught y naught now x naught y naught is any arbitrary point of the complex plane now we know that uh, cosine x okay so if x is a real number cosine x is always defined for any point for any real number and similarly e raised to power minus y is also defined for any real number y so we can say that this u of x y is defined for each and every real number x and y or we can say that it is defined for any uh, number x y okay so a point on in the complex plane and similarly for v of x y e raised to power minus y is defined everywhere and sine x is also defined for every real number x so we can say that so this implies u of x y and v of x y so these are defined for all numbers of the form x y okay so uh, so this condition uh, is satisfied that uh, these uh, ux or, or basically this function f of z is defined in some neighborhood of z naught and what is z naught it's basically an arbitrary point of the complex plane now the second condition that uh, this function must satisfy uh, in order to be differentiable at uh, this point z naught is the partial derivatives ux vy uy vx must exist everywhere in that neighborhood now what is ux in this case so u of x y in this case is e raised to power minus y cosine x now uh, we can we can easily calculate u x in this case the partial derivative of u with respect to x in this case is e raised to power minus y and the derivative of uh, cosine x is basically minus sine x so this is the partial derivative of u with respect to x and uh, we know that in fact it exists okay so why it exists because uh, both e raised to power minus y and cosine x so these are differentiable and you know the product of differentiable is differentiable so that's why we are able to calculate this partial derivative and similarly we can calculate u y the partial derivative of u with respect to y so in this case this becomes okay so we are uh, cosine x will remain cosine x and uh, we will take the derivative of e raised to power minus y so this becomes e raised to 1 minus y with a negative sign and uh, we can easily see that this also exists now let's see what will happen with v of x y so v of x y in this case is e raised to power minus y sine x so what is the partial derivative of uh, v with respect to x so in this case it exists and it is in fact equal to e raised to power minus y cosine x and v y the partial derivative of v with respect to y is basically equal to so we are now differentiating with respect to y so basically it becomes minus e raised to power minus y sine x because there will be no change in sine x and the derivative of e raised to power minus y is minus e raised to power minus y so the partial derivatives of these component functions so they exist and uh, they are defined at each and every uh, point x y in the plane so that's why they are defined everywhere in the plane in the complex plane now uh, let's see if uh, uh, the cauchy riemann equations are satisfied in this case or not now we have seen that ux is equal to minus e raised to power minus y sine x and uy is basically equal to minus e raised to power minus y cosine x and we have also calculated what is vx so vx is basically e raised to power minus y cosine x and vy is basically equal to minus e raised to power minus y sine x now uh, let's see if the first equation is satisfied or not so the first equation ux is equal to vy so a uh, ux is equal to minus e raised to power minus y sine x and uh, what is vy so vy is minus e raised to power minus y sine x so this is exactly equal to this 
So the first equation is satisfied. Now let's see if the second equation is satisfied or not. So for the second equation, so we start with uy and uy is basically equal to minus e raised to power minus y cosine x. So this is basically equal to minus of vx because vx is e raised to power minus y cosine x. So th there is a relation between u y and vx which is uh, uy is equal to minus vx. So the second CR equation is also satisfied in this case. So all the three conditions are satisfied. So we can say that this function f of z is differentiable everywhere in the complex plane. And if we want to calculate uh, the derivative of this function at any point x0, y0, then we can use either of the equations, either this one or this one to actually calculate it. So over here we know that ux is basically equal to minus e raised to power minus y sine x and basically vx is equal to e raised to power minus y cosine x. So we can say that f prime of z naught is equal to e raised to power minus e raised to power y naught because over here uh, the y component is y naught and sine of x naught plus iota e raised to power minus y naught cosine x naught because uh, we are calculating the derivative at x naught y naught so we replace x with x naught and y with y naught so in this discussion we discussed a necessary and sufficient criteria using cauchy riemann equations for checking the differentiability of a complex valued function now this criteria is going to be very useful in our further discussions in our next discussion we will derive the cauchy riemann equations for polar coordinates